Wow. Now, some blind Londoners are facing hostile behaviour from members of the public when it comes to social distancing. Emily Davidson's guide dog, Unity, has recently retired, and she now feels terrified of going out with her cane. Emily is from Lewisham and experiencing hostile behaviour and verbal abuse from some members of the public, all down, obviously, to social distancing during lockdown. I'm really pleased to say Emily Davidson joins Anna and myself on the Barking Hour. Hello, Emily. Hello, how are you? Hello, it's lovely to speak to you. Now, tell us a little bit about Unity, because Unity, your guide dog, has retired. Is that right? Yes, she has. So, Unity is a Labrador Golden Fever Cross. Um, she turned 10 in October, and guide dogs um, are, as a rule, they're supposed to retire by around the age of 10 on average. Um, and that is because, essentially, they're a working dog and they are entitled to have a retirement to enjoy a period of their life where they don't have to work. So Unity was due to retire around October. Uh, she kept working for a little bit longer and she recently retired this month. So she's been out of work now for about two weeks. And so what does that mean for you, Emily? Is there another dog being trained up or will you continue without her? Well, because of the coronavirus pandemic, it's really had an impact on the way that the charity guide dogs can train their dogs because, of course, there's a lot of restrictions to being able to go into places. A lot of places that they'd normally train their dogs are closed. There's a lot of limits with social distancing measures and it's just, at the moment, not safe to train dogs in the way that, you know, the trainers course, normally yeah. would. Absolutely, so, I get I get that. So, so what's going to happen? And that must be tricky for you, although probably, like all of us, you are going out less, are you? So, I mean, it is a catch-22 situation because I'm not going out a lot. I am furloughed from work, so that's a bonus because there's no obligation to go out anywhere that I would need, obviously, to work a guide dog. But it's also the flip side of that. Is that it means that because we're still in a lockdown, dogs aren't being trained you know, as quickly as they usually would be. And I am on the waiting list, but, of course, the lockdown... The, the various lockdowns over the last year now have meant that there's other people who are also waiting for a guide dog who may have been waiting for longer. So essentially I am on a waiting list, but it's a case of we just don't know how long it's going to take because of everything of course, that's going on at the moment. So, so this is something, Emily, I'd never thought about before, about um, being assisted by members of the public during, if indeed you want assistance when you are out and about, um, during this pandemic? Because I guess anyone, you know, if you turn to someone and ask, you know, have the lights changed or whatever, I would assume you don't need that amount of help, Emily, but some may do. Some people who are slight uh, sight restricted probably do need some assistance from members of the public. And this is this where people are being rather abrupt. Well, I think it's more when you know a person who can't see doesn't follow the rules correctly. So it could be if they don't know where a queue is and they accidentally end up in the wrong place or if they get too close to someone and they haven't seen that they're there and that person hasn't made themselves known. Or, you know, it could just be things like the fact that they need to take up more space because of the fact that they have a guide dog or a cane. Yes, yes. Um, and we see people are just, in a, at the moment, people are very stressed, understandably, and sometimes we can just be in the wrong place at the wrong time. So uh, I think that's kind of the concern for a lot of us. It's just that we're not able to follow social distancing because we can't see to do it. What do you think... Can what do you, I mean? Guide dogs obviously can't socially distance. That's not part of their training. What can, what do you think can be done to help uh, people who are sight restricted or blind whilst walking the streets of London with their dogs? Well, I think first and foremost, it's about people being aware of people who can't see not being able to see someone. And really, I think the ball is in the sighted person's court. They need to be aware of, of someone who can't see and they need to take the initiative to give that person some space. But I also think that the government and also businesses and councils need to make more of an effort to make social distancing measures more accessible. So, for example, you know, you have the markers on the floor say this is a two-meter distance, but they're not tactile. There's no way a person who can't see would be able to know that they are standing on one. So that's just one example for you. So I think it's public awareness, but it's also to do with the way that we are currently making social distancing measures accessible or, you know, not for want of a better word. And um, obviously, the, uh, we, we always say this, and, and 
I'm sure this is right, isn't it? Not to pet guide dogs, not to pat them however much we want to before all this, um, because they will be social distancing, but it was never to be encouraged anyway when they're working, was it? No, because obviously they're working, they're in harness and, you know, it can distract them if they are petted when they are working, but especially now, because obviously it's not just about the dog's ability to work, but it's also about social distancing because that owner has to also handle the dog, pet the dog, you know, look after the dog, groom the dog, so obviously you know, if you're touching that dog and then possibly spreading the virus to, you know, onto that dog's fur and then obviously the dog touches or vice versa. It's just, you know, something that's not really advisable. But I've had it quite a lot. You know, I've been out shopping or whatever and people still pet the dog. And um, it doesn't make any sense because they're coming well within the two metre distance to do that, which I kind of find very strange. So that does still definitely happen. You know, the pandemic hasn't changed that at all. Emily Davison, thank you so much for talking to us because it's certainly given me thought on a subject that I hadn't actually considered, you know, um, visually impaired people and their plight uh, through socially distancing and um, certainly walking around London. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Um, it is just coming up to eight minutes to three. You're listening to The Barking Hour, myself and Anna Webb. Anna, it is something, isn't it? I, you know, people can... If, a, if, a, if a, there is somebody with a guide dog, an assistance dog, by their side, um, and that dog may not be able to socially distance because they don't know now there's a new set of distances, um, you have to just accommodate it, don't you? You, you do. And it's, it's like we were saying the other week, you know, everywhere's very um, overcrowded at the moment outside and everybody's got to give and take. Um, it's a bit like the same thing goes with joggers and dogs. We all want to enjoy the outdoor space. Everyone, you know, is allowed to go out. So you have to, you know, work with common sense and kindness and, and, and give and take, really. We are in a pandemic. Things are not normal. And I think it's quite selfish not to do so. I think people get very, I mean, there's so much anger. I, you know, the, I've said, I say this every week. People are very <laughs> angry. The people are very quick to judge, all of us. And I do think it's because we're just getting fed up um, and we've got to really keep a lid on it because we are getting nearer and nearer to freedom. <laughs> and yeah. we've just got to calm down. But you can, you know, you can see it all. People are very judgmental at the moment with mask wearing. It's not the right way up. And you just think, please calm down um this is from maddie joe and from maddie joe and from maddie joe and from maddie joe and from maddie joe and